We are back again with one more vector proof, and this might be the last one we do on the channel for a while. So in this question, we have this set up, and let's try and fill in some vectors first. We get given that O to A is 6A, and M is the midpoint of O to A. So we're going to draw this on the diagram as a 3A from O to M, and then another 3A from M to A. M is the midpoint. We get given that O to B is 6B. So I'm going to put 6B down here. But my diagram's a little bit misleading. This 6B is for the entire O to B section. We get given that ON is KB. So I'm also going to represent this up here as KB. But again, just being really, really clear, this KB is just for O to N. The 6b is for the entire OB vector. And we also get given that b is the midpoint of AC. So we're going to have to use that a little bit later. Let's see then what we need to do. MNC is a straight line. So what this normally means in vector questions is we should find the smaller part of this line. So we want to find the vector MN. And then later on, we're going to find the vector MC and work with them being scalar multiples of one another. Let's start off with MN then. So to go M to N, you want to go from M to O and then O to N. So we're writing M to O plus O to N. And this vector is really easy to find. M to O is our minus 3A vector. And then going from O to N is our KB vector. So minus 3A plus KB. Moving on to our second part then, where we'd like to find M to C. But actually to go from M to C, we need to consider another vector first. So we're going to consider going from A to C first. And the reason why is because A to B we can do. We know B is the midpoint of AC. So AC must be two lots of AB. After we've done that, then we can think about our M to C vector. So let's first find out AB then. So two lots of A to B. Well, to go A to B, you can go A to O. So that's minus 6A. And to go from O to B is our 6B. So minus 6A plus 6B. So multiplying out the two here with the brackets, we'll get minus 12A plus 12B. But remember, that's for A to C. So that's traveling along this line from A to C. We would like to find from M to C. So I'm going to write down below M to C. Well, we need to go from M to A and then from A to C. So it's actually just a small tweak to our, our A to C vector. So from M to C, sorry, I mean M to A, M to A is 3A, and now we want to add our A to C, so that was this one, and that was our minus 12A plus 12B. So minus 12A plus 12B, our A to C vector. Sorting these out then, we're going to get minus 9A plus 12B. So this is our M to C. Switching colours once again. Now we use the kind of thinking of us saying, well, M to C is some multiple of M to N because they're on a straight line together. So let's write our two vectors. M to N is minus 3A plus KB. So minus 3A plus KB. And M to C is minus 9a plus 12b. 
what we're saying, if they're on a straight line together, is that these two vectors are scalar multiples of one another. It would be really good then if we could find this multiplier. And actually the a's have the key here for us, because to go from minus three to minus nine, you must be multiplying by three. So I'm representing by saying times three from mc to mn, sorry, from mn to mc. That means on the other side, we also must be multiplying by three for the b vectors. So k multiplied by three is giving us 12. That means k must be four. So by thinking about those sort of scalar multiples, we found k equals four.